What's up guys? My name is Brian Sturry and welcome to your first tutorial on building a web server. In this series I'm going to cover assembling an actual physical machine uh, and then what we're going to do is install the BIOS update on the motherboard. So, someone might come to me and say, Brian, why do I want to build a computer and not go out and purchase one? Well, here's my response to that. One, it's really, really fun to build your own machine. And you get to brag to all your friends, hey, look at this, I built this, this is cool, it runs Linux. I know Linux now, yay! But, on top of that, you are able to troubleshoot your entire machine. So if you have any issues with any of the hardware, you're going to know right away pretty much what's going on and why that's not working. And you're also going to be able to replace it really inexpensively instead of sending it out to, to Dell or Gateway or any of the other popular computer companies out there because that takes a lot of time so let's talk about our goals a little bit here uh... usually when you're building a computer for me it's typically a, a video game machine you know it's it's like a console i would add like a really expensive graphic card in there and i'd worry about heat management and cable management and i'd get like a a nice processor and like five or six hard drives and 12 gigabytes of memory and all this stuff might be going over your head but you'll you'll learn it all very soon this particular uh, machine the gear the the goal <laughs> the gear the goal of it is to act as a web server and not really do any of the hardcore graphic stuff uh, it would also work great as an internet machine but uh, I guess that's kind of what we're using it for so let's talk about the part list I actually went to Newegg and I assembled a part list and I don't work for Newegg, I'm not affiliated with them at all, but I like to go here and read the reviews and see what people say about things. Uh, usually I go to a local computer store because if I have an issue I can bring it right back. And they'll usually match the prices of Newegg. So find a store in your area that matches prices of Newegg and you're set. Otherwise, hey, Newegg's always done pretty good for me. So anyway, here's our parts list. This is what typically goes into a computer. First we have our case and inside the case I look for a few things. Uh, one, what the motherboard size is and two, what features the case offers. So does it offer USB 3.0 on the front? Is it, uh, I don't know, I mean that's pretty much it for me. Cable management is the next thing too. So does it offer USB 3.0 and is it good for cable management? Um, yeah, those are the two things. And then after that, I have my, we have our motherboard, we have our power supply, we have our CPU, we have our memory, and we have our hard drive. And if you were building a like Windows machine, you would also want to have a DVD drive in there. Uh, and if you were building a gaming machine, you would also want to add a graphic card in there. And if you guys are interested in me showing you how to add graphic cards and CD drives and all that other good stuff, let me know. In the, in the comments below and I will go ahead and make a tutorial for how to do that. So let's talk about our case. This is the case that I decided to go with and the reason I decided to go with it was because it just looked cool. Um, I'm staring at my case probably a majority of the time and I just thought that this case would be perfect for a server. It just kind of looks like a server. I already have a gaming machine that I painted and I've done all kinds of cool stuff with with lights but this is just kind of like something I can I can leave on the ground or leave like off to the side that doesn't look like a computer. So it's kind of cool. Um, now what we need to know here is what kind of motherboard does it take. It says right in the name, you know, Micro ATX Mini Tower. But it also takes Mini ITX. It's a form factor that I don't often use. But th this is cool. So Micro ATX is what we're going to use. It offers USB 3.0 on the front. And is there anything else? It couple fans that's good so now that we know it takes a micro ATX we need to find a micro ATX motherboard well I picked one out so here's the one that I picked out it's a gigabyte one and this offers all kinds of cool stuff one we can connect it to our case the the front of the case with the USB 3.0 that's what this port is here and that's important so if you guys get a case that's like a forty fifty dollar case and it happens to offer USB 3.0 make sure your motherboard has a spot to plug that in now other than that it says dual channel memory with these speeds that's cool uh, 
LGA 1155 socket, PCI Express 2.0, we got a couple of those guys, and a 1X slot. And I'll explain what all those are when we cover the motherboard, but that's all good stuff. So we know that this is our processor socket, and we know that this is the type of memory that it'll take, and 240 pin, and we have four of those slots. Uh, so let's pick out our processor. I went with an i5 processor. You can pick an i3 and get away with it. I was very happy with an i3, so if you want to save a little bit of money, go ahead and do that. Uh, I decided to be a little more on the power side for this one. So that's the one that I picked. Um, as far as memory goes, I got 8 gigabytes, 240 pin, DDR3, 1600. That's all you really have to look for when it comes to memory. Just make sure that the pins line up and that the speed is supported by the motherboard and you should be just fine. Um, as far as the drives go, the drive bays, this is the hard drive I picked out which is a solid state drive. That's what SSD stands for. HDD stands for hard disk drive. So hard disk drives are mechanical devices. If you drop them you could break the pins so handle them carefully. Um, this is just like a flash drive that you can stick in a hard drive slot. I mean, that's really the best way to describe it, except they're more expensive because they're newer and they're kind of a more friendlier technology. So you're going to pay more per gigabyte. But I was able to pick this baby up for 50 bucks at a local computer store on sale. So I grabbed it and thought it was a great deal. And uh, these are faster than hard drives, typically. Let's just hope that stays true. Okay, so the final item that we need is the power supply. I picked up a 500 watt power supply. Uh, this is going to do fine. It's I don't think it has any standards on it because you usually pay more for that. But I picked this up as an inexpensive power supply for this server. It had pretty good feedback. Three eggs. It's average. But, I mean, again, I, I wasn't looking to, to buy expensive stuff. I think this whole bill cost me like $700. I don't even think I paid that. I think I paid like 600 for this or like 550 for this. So if you can go to a local computer store, usually they can match Newegg. And if not, see if you can just pick stuff up on sale or, or reuse stuff that you have laying around. That'll be it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, go to craigersoft.net slash forums and register. I will be happy to answer anything that you guys have there. Uh, also in the comments below, uh, you can leave comments there. I'll respond anytime. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Please subscribe.